Okay, so let's do a little bit of a deep dive into automating Creo Parametric with NitroCell and Excel tables. NitroCell does have the ability to read and write Excel tables natively, so you can actually retrieve information from Creo, write those out to a native Excel table, and then use that table as a reference for either the setting of information into Creo or the getting of information for additional content. Once you've got data in a tableized format within Excel, that opens up Power Query, which is a standard module that comes with Excel these days. Power Query could be used to augment that data and merge it with ERP data, for example, by connecting to a database or importing a CSV file, or actually referencing other tables within the same workbook or across multiple workbooks. Power Query can also be used to generate reports and summaries of things that need to be changed within Creo or just the current status of things. Or it can also be used to actually generate a table that needs to be modified to pass that data back into Creo upon the final execution. A couple things about tables you need to know. Number one, they're global references in Excel, so it's very important to name them so that they're easy to find and understand and relate either by Excel functions or by NitroCell functions. When data is written from NitroCell out to Excel, it's going to expect a certain format of the information based on the function that you're using. So the writing of information expects the proper column names. So parameter column names are going to be different than note column names or file listings column names. Those same references can also be used to send data back depending on the function that you're dealing with. So the reading of data from a table requires the minimum column names, and you should look up which those are for based on which function you're trying to run. You can also use tables as a reference to create a connection into Power Query to do a transformation of that data, for example, to find and replace information or to prune it down, and then use that table as a reference for reading in changes and imparting changes into Creo. A couple of tips regarding table automation in, in Excel. There's a hard way to do it, and there's an easy way to do it. The hard way is to basically just use the native Excel interface and use the tools that it provides to manually create a table in Excel. That process is typically done through the GUI, the, the toolbar, or by a keyboard using a control T, and that'll create a very simple table anywhere your cursor is on any worksheet within Excel. And it will assign a default name that needs to be changed manually to something more meaningful. In NitroCell, we actually have a function that does two things at, at the same time. We have a table create function. You can specify the name of the table that you want to create. And it will create a default table, as you see here, and automatically set the name to the defined name that you give it. So the table creation methods are equivalent in this way. The column headers are basically the same in this way, but you can see that the NC underscore default is a clear indication that NitroCell generated it. And then the default names table, of course, uh, names for each of these tables is identified up in the toolbar. The most important automation reference is the name of the table. You always must remember that. So another thing that we've done with NitroCell to try to streamline things and reduce some headaches with dealing with tables is we basically consider a manually created table and a NitroCell created table and their default conditions to be the same. So the table name is the most important unique automation reference between these two things. It's important you make them short, obvious, easy to identify and remember, which means if you manually create it, you need to rename it to something else so that you can reference it more easily in your NitroCell automation later. Another thing that's important here is that NitroCell can work with either of these tables and automatically populate them based on the NitroCell command that you're running. So how would this work? Just as an example, you would run a worksheet create to generate a default table. And this would also work if you did it manually and renamed it. Tables in Excel by default are designed to expand horizontally to the right and down. So whenever you run a function from NitroCell, for example, this table parameter get function, it will not only generate the table with the proper columns that it needs, but it will also write the data in the format that's needed. And another nice thing about this is that anytime you run the same type of command to the same table, it will append it by default. Another nice thing about the NitroCell command is that every item within uh, a table item name is considered an editable reference. So you can actually use this with other NitroCell functions to perform other operations. For example, if we wanted to set, make changes to this table and set each of those changes back to the models uh, directly, 
this one single command that you see here will iterate through each of those items in the table and perform those updates. A couple things about tables that you really don't want to do. In NitroCell, we do have a worksheet table create function, which allows you to specify a specific location where a table should be created. And that goes for a specific worksheet or a specific cell address. The problem with this is that if you do not plan this out correctly, you could potentially get into a situation like this, where the specific functions you're running to populate those tables could create problems for the expansion of those tables and overlapping of them. So it may not appear to be a problem when you first start, but it will be the next automation that you run on a different model or a different assembly or a different set of drawings that will have a different amount of content that will expand these out and cause problems for the tables when they're being generated or populated. So this is what you really don't want to do. What you do want to do is plan for tables like this. And NitroCell is designed to make this process as, as fluid as possible and as automated as possible. So you don't really have to think about where the tables are going to position. By default on an empty worksheet, it's going to place your table at A1. And then whenever a function you run to populate that table by its name, will then populate the table by the number of columns and also the, the content and rows that are there. The very next table create function that you do after that previous table has been created and populated will generate a default gap and locate the next available column and at row one for the next table that's there and then populate it with the next NitroCell command that you might happen to use. And this process basically continues. So as you can see here, we've been able to go through each of these functions for table create and not have to specify anything as to where it was going. NitroCell will figure that out on its own. So the next big question that comes up is, well, okay, what happens if the automation that I've just created is applied to a new model or a drawing? What will happen? Well, actually, the table create function will also do a clear of the table that's there. So it will actually remove all of the content that's there and repopulate it with the new content that is pulled in through the following function. The next one would do the same thing, and the next one would do the same thing, and the next one would do the same thing. Because we're allowing for this uh, dynamic positioning of tables when they were created, and we're rewriting the data in the same format, they're just going to expand and contract vertically to kind of fill the amount of data that you're populating it with. When it comes to reading and writing the tables, there's a couple things you have to know. Number one, when you're writing a table, there are command-specific columns required. So for example, this table application get files is going to write out these two columns. And it's really important to just try to remember to use a table create first and then populate it with that particular table function in this, in this case, table application, because it will automatically generate the columns for you. And the next table that's generated would obviously be spaced over one column and then populate down. When it comes down to reading tables, for example, setting the parameters based on the content that's there, the read table requires a minimum command specific required columns, but can have extra. Also, the reads can work from any Excel table or Power Query result as long as they're structured correct for the function that you're working with. To give you a little bit of an example of what not to do, table commands expect columns when writing. So in this particular case, if we're writing to a particular table with this table parameter get, it's written that out and it looks correct. If we did the same thing for report item counts, you can see that it looks correct and will write out. The minute we try to redirect the, the report item counts to the parameters table, the format and the header is going to be different. So it will fail. The same thing goes for trying to rewrite or write parameters to a report item counts. It's going to fail because the columns are not the same. To be a little bit more illustrative about this, I've got these tables set up here. And these are existing tables that have already been created. They've been populated with these functions. So there is no problem in changing the order of these functions and how they execute after the tables are created because tables, as we said at the beginning of this presentation, are kind of a global reference within, within Excel. However, you will have big problems if you try to change the target for where a function writes. So if you tried to, let's say, move the order of these things, but then change the reference for where they're writing to, if that table already exists, it's going to conflict in the amount of data in the columns and also the, the rows that it's going to try to write and therefore produce errors. 
So the best way to do this is to basically create and populate, create and populate, create and populate. That's the sequence that you need to kind of follow to make sure that things don't step on each other and you don't get any problems with the, the flow of data and everything will grow vertically as it goes. The create function also does the clear. So again, when we run through this automation with a new model or a new set of drawings, it's going to clear the tables and repopulate them on their own. As a final little tidbit here, automating data with Excel and Power Query is very, very powerful. We definitely recommend you look into this because it, you could do so much with hardly any formulas in Excel and very repeatable processes um, using Power Query that can then be tied into updating Creo data or, or doing things in Creo. So if we had these two tables that uh, were written out of Creo using NitroCell, those can be connected into Power Query there can be some type of a transformation or a modification of that data or comparison of that data using filter, transform, and merge operations. And then those new parameters can then be written back out into a new table. Those Power Query results must be loaded as an Excel table. Just because you have them in Power Query doesn't mean you have access to them. The interface between Excel and Creo depends on this table interface, just like it does for Power Query. One important thing about this is that within that table, you must have an item name as an editable reference. Column names must satisfy the read operations for making modifications back into Creo. And NitroCell can read this like any other Excel table. So in the end, when you have all this set up correctly, especially with Power Query, you can get data out, use that table to reference other data to get out of Creo. Reference that as a connection into Power Query, generate the changes and results, and then use that result set to update Creo models and assemblies or drawings.